you know, I think like it was about 10 years ago, there was a huge study in the Annals of Internal Medicine, and it was called Enough is Enough. Vitamins and mineral supplements not only don't do anything, they may be harmful. Yeah. And I think that was, do you remember that study? Yeah. It was about 10 years ago. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I was, I just dug in and it was a meta-analysis and I went and looked at all those studies and I found that all these flaws, again, coming from- You looked at the actual studies that they made their conclusions from. So they yeah. do a review and they go, we're going to look at all these, these studies and we're going to make a sort of summary and that's called a meta-analysis. And then from that, you didn't just take their conclusions, you actually went and looked at the data itself from the original studies. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I put out a video about it like years and years ago and it, it, it get, all these flaws that we just talked about were there. And um, here we are 10 years later- and the COSMOS trials was just published, right? So this is another meta-analysis of a couple randomized controlled trials where older adults were given a multivitamin. They had about 20 or so essential vitamins, essential minerals, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, right, magnesium. This was all present in this multivitamin, and they were given it for two years. Yeah. What this study found, these are randomized controlled trials, placebo-controlled, right? Um, it the, the, the multivitamin actually did improve brain aging. So they ha they were less, people taking the multivitamin mineral supplement were less likely to experience um, cognitive dysfunction, memory loss. And in fact, they experienced a improvement in their brain aging that was equivalent to reversing two years of brain aging. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Randomized controlled trial. Here we are 10 years later. Yeah. And there's many, many other studies that show the value of nutrients in many, many different conditions, right? Exactly. Yeah. I, you know, I think that it, it it comes down to, yes, you should try to get your micronutrients from diet. However, taking, you know, a multivitamin supplement, taking vitamin D, taking omega-3s, like these are insurance, right? This is insurance to make sure you're getting your optimum levels. But it's the insufficiency. And with vitamin D, it's a really big one because it is converted into a steroid hormone. So this is something that is going into the nucleus of our cell and binding and interacting with DNA. It has a little sequence of DNA called a vitamin D response element. It's mm. so important that it's encoded in our DNA, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, to not have enough vitamin D, so 70% of the U.S. population doesn't meet the sufficient levels of vitamin D, which is about 30 nanograms per mil. 70%. 30. Which would, would be... And if you add it up to 45 or 50, it's probably like 80... Plus 90%. Right, right, yeah. So, and and so that would be, um, there, there have been studies looking at all cause mortality and vitamin D levels. Of course, this is again observational. Lots of meta analyses out there, even dating back for like 30 years. And it seems as though having at least 40 nanograms per mil seems to be a sweet spot. You know, 40 to 60 yep. is a really good place to be yep. where you're having a good level of vitamin D. But again, it's a steroid hormone. It's not, it's it's regulating over 5% of the protein encoding gene, human genome. That's like thousands of genes. Yeah. You know, everything from immune function, it plays yeah. an important role in pre preventing autoimmunity. Yeah. Brain function, it regulates genes that are important for converting tryptophan into serotonin. Yeah. Serotonin is an important neurotransmitter that regulates mood, cognitive function, impulse control. You know, so... Vitamin D. Maybe I need more of that then. <laughs> well, and, and the problem is, is that, you know, vitamin D, typically you make it from UVB radiation exposure from the sun. Yeah. But we're all told to shield ourselves from the sun and sun's locked. And so we live indoors, work indoors. And yeah, it's, it's a problem. I mean, we're all running around half naked hunting and gathering. We got a lot of vitamin D I and mean, we ate, uh, and we're coastal areas and we ate, you know, f fish, small fish like herring and so on. They're higher in vitamin D or if you're foraging mushrooms, you're high in vitamin D. So th there's ways in which our historical population got it, the you know, Paleolithic ancestors, but we don't get that. Right. Exactly. We don't. And so, you know, I do think, so people, it, it, the simple solution is a vitamin D supplement, right? And so about 4,000 I use a day will generally get someone from a deficient range, which is 20 nanograms per mil up to a sufficient range. Okay. But you, you're just talking about 10 times what's normally in a multivitamin or what doctors will recommend. Ten, I, ten I am. Times. I am. Because you, yeah, you really do. It's about a thousand. I, it's a 1000 I use of vitamin D will, will raise blood levels between five to 10 nanograms per mil. But it all, we have genes. We have different variations of our genes that are able to do this. And this again comes down to these clinical studies showing that, you know, nothing happens. We're well, all different. We're all different.
And so some people actually have to take a much higher dose, right? Because they have genes that aren't doing converting vitamin D3 into 25-hydroxy vitamin D, which is this circulating form of vitamin D or the steroid hormone, one 25-hydroxy vitamin D. And so, so maybe you can kind of take us down that, that list a little deeper. So we've got, we've got to get omega-3s. We've got to get vitamin D. We've got to get magnesium. And, and literally, we could spend a podcast on each nutrient and probably 10 podcasts on each nutrient, but we're just going to go through so people understand, like, these are the things that are non-negotiables that you've got to have and that you've got to test, you've got to measure and figure out whether your levels are okay, because the average physician or a practitioner isn't going to do it. And they don't know how to do it. And they don't get taught this in medical school. And I'm working on trying to change that in Washington, but it's, 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 uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of a travesty because it's, 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 it's like a staring us in the face that we have this epidemic of micronutrient deficiencies or insufficiencies, and they're not being addressed. And often worse, we're being told not to fix them. Yeah. So the vitamin D, magnesium, uh, omega-3 we talked about, right? Um, you know, believe it or not, a lot of people, I don't remember the exact percentage, but quite a bit of people are not getting enough vitamin C, something like 30 or 40, 40%, 40% or something like that are not getting yeah. enough vitamin C. Yeah. I, and, I heard that 10% are deficient at the level that would cause scurvy in America. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah. Just not eating any ve any vegetables or, or fruits because yeah. vitamin C is also in vegetables, not right. just in fruits. Right. Calcium is another one. Um, so, I mean, these are things that can be tested for and measured. Um, another one is vitamin E. People are, are not getting enough vitamin E. Again, that's also found in things like whole avocados, whole nuts, grains. whole grains. Yeah. And then um, potassium is a big one because it's so important for the sodium potassium pump, which plays a role in blood pressure. And so when you're talking about too much sodium and not enough potassium, it's really exacerbating that not getting enough potassium mm -hmm. aspect, right? Because that ratio is so important. And so not only are, I think it's something like 96% of the U.S. population doesn't meet the adequate intake for potassium. Yeah. It's essentially everyone. Yeah. And, and our potassium intake, is, as Hunter gathers, should be 10 to 1 potassium to sodium. Now it's the other way around. It's the other way around. Exactly. And so there's, there's you know, all sorts of problems with blood pressure and, uh, you know, gosh, it's like even like 30% of like individuals age 20 to 39 have hypertension. Yeah. You know, these are young adults yeah. with hypertension. Yeah. And yeah. we now know that hypertension isn't just a risk for cardiovascular disease. It's a risk for dementia and Alzheimer's disease, particularly if you start earlier, right? If you're like a younger person, so like it's cumulative exposure to yeah. hypertension. Yeah. You know, it's 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 important because you have to get blood flow to your your brain, and um, you know, you've got all these tiny like ninety percent of the of the brain vascular vasculature surrounding the brain is made of these tiny tiny blood vessels mm. that are like the smaller than a, the size of a hair in terms of diameter mm. and they have to get blood flow to them so exercise helps that but hypertension exacerbates the lack of blood flow going to those blood vessels and what happens is they're so tiny they start to sort of constrict yeah. and and sort of fall fall off and you can get mini strokes and mini strokes but also neurons don't get the nutrients and the oxygen they need and so then you start to lose neurons mm. right and you get brain atrophy and so there's this connection between hypertension and dementia and, um, you know, I'm, I'm talking about p potassium here because potassium does play a, an important role in... Very leading blood pressure. Yeah. And so does magnesium, though, too. So right? does magnesium. <laughs> so does magnesium. It's the relaxation mineral. And then exercise, life. of course, is one of the best things that you can yeah. do. So, you know, one of the last papers that Bruce published, is his second to last paper, uh, was called Longevity Vitamins. And, yeah. Yeah. and it, you know, paper. it was about these vitamins like vitamin D and magnesium and omega-3 uh, taurine or some other like essential amino acids. amino acids that play a role in the way we age and and slowing age related decline. Yeah, and you know there was just a recent study that came out on vitamin D sufficient levels of vitamin D. People that supplemented with vitamin D were forty percent less likely to have dementia. Yeah, you know so the the reality is is that I mean vitamins don't just create expensive urine. They they don't <laughs> they don't that you know these micronutrients are running everything in our body. Yeah. And when you have ins insufficient levels of them, you're not going to necessarily see it, although you probably feel it, you know. like and You might have symptoms, but you don't attach it to that. Right. Deficiency. You don't attach it to that. But it's causing this insidious damage, right? This insidious DNA damage, a little bit of oxidative stress, a little bit of inflammation. Or, or just I get sick all the time because my vitamin D is low. Right. Or, or, you, or you're getting sick or all the time. my muscles ache, you know. Because I'm vitamin D is low, or you know I have muscle cramps because my magnesium's low, right? So, 
or I have depression because my you know methylation vitamins are low. Like people have symptoms, they just don't correlate it with the nutrient deficiencies. Depression is interesting. Um, there's a there's a pretty classic study that no one ever talks about um, where healthy individuals were injected with lipopolysaccharide. So for those listening, this is a component of your bac bac bacterial outer cell membranes. It's present in our um, in our colon because we have about, I don't know how many trillions of bacteria, like it, it, so many bacteria in there, right? A 40 lot of, or 50 trillion. Okay, 40 or 50 trillion. There's about a gram of lipopolysaccharide in our gut because those bacteria do die off. And these are bacterial toxins. This is what they pisses are. off your immune system to know it. It does. And when we have gut permeability, lots of things that cause that, leaky it releases gut. it, right? It, also known as leaky gut, it, le it leaches the LPS into our bloodstream. Well, this study took healthy individuals and injected them with an amount of LPS that would be equivalent to something that you could get from intestinal permeability. Yeah. And it caused depressive symptoms in these individuals. Okay, one, that links inflammation to depression, 100%. right? Two, if those individuals were given EPA, so this is one of the omega-3 fatty acids, uh, it does play a major role in dampening inflammation through a variety of mechanisms like resolvins and maricins and the um, SPMs. These are all molecules that are resolving inflammation very quickly. They did not experience those depressive symptoms yeah. if they were injected with the LPS. If they got omega-3s. If they have the omega-3s. Yeah. So it, it, it comes down to like, again, you know. And omega-3s have been shown to actually help with depression. They have. And ADD. They have, <laughs> yeah. 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 With depression, yeah. Um, specifically EPA seems to be very important for depression. And I think that's because there's a really big inflammatory component to depression. 